this video I'm going to work out two examples of factoring completely. Um, this would be after you have went through an entire chapter on factoring and you have all of the different types of factoring at your disposal. All right, it's not to teach the individual uh, different types of factoring. It's just showing you how to put them all together. All right, so um, this first example here, I've got 81x to the fourth minus 16. I've got two terms and I do have a minus sign. So that should be a trigger to uh, you to check for the difference of two squares. I'm going to look at this first term and see if it's a perfect square root. Can I take the square root of 81x to the fourth? I can, it would be a 9x squared. Can I take the square root of 16? Yes, I can, that would be a four. So this is the difference of two squares. So I'm gonna take each one of those square roots and write it with a plus and a minus. So I will have an x, a nine x squared plus four times a nine x squared minus four. That's doing the, the difference of two squares. All right, now if I'm factoring completely, I'm gonna take a look at this and see if each one of these, um, or if there's anything else that could be factored again. This is two terms, but there's a plus sign there, so this um, binomial cannot be factored again. But looking at this binomial, I have a minus sign, again two terms, and both of them are perfect square roots. The square root of this is a 3x, and the square root of this is a 2. So this part can be factored again. So this right here can be factored into the difference of two squares. We'll just write difference of two squares right there. All right, so this, since I cannot change it, it's just going to stay in my answer as a 9x squared plus 4. All right, this one then will be split up into that difference of two squares. Taking the square root of the first one, I'll have a 3x plus a 2, and then I'll have a 3x minus a 2. All right, again, looking at each one of these, checking to see if anything else can be factored. It cannot, so now I have factored this expression completely. All right, now for the second one here, I've got four terms. All right, looking through there, I do not have a greatest common factor or anything, so then that means I'm gonna go through my different types of factoring techniques for four terms. The very first one you should always try is factor by grouping. If that doesn't work, you could try um, rational root theorem, because that's another way to factor four terms. And you could also just try regrouping them. Uh, sometimes you can force the difference of two squares by grouping three of the terms together. All right, this one is not going to work out like that. Um, but some of them might. So those are your three different possibilities or options. This one, though, I think is just going to work nicely with a factor by grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them in the order that they are. I'm going to group the first two together. When I group the second two terms together, I'm going to make sure and include that minus sign so that I can see that that is a negative four right there. All right, so on factor by grouping, um, we take the greatest common factor out of this first term, which is going to be an x squared. So I'll have an x squared, and then that'll leave me with an x plus a seven. All right, now on this one, I've got a negative 4x minus 28. I'm going to take out a negative 4 because anytime that leading uh, term is negative, you definitely want to take out that negative. So I'm going to take out a negative 4. All right, and that will leave me then with an x plus a 7. Okay, now at this point, for um, factor by grouping, hopefully you recognize that this is everything multiplied together, so that creates a term. This is a term. And then separated by that minus sign, and then everything multiplied together here creates a term. So I have a polynomial at this point that has two terms. All right, I am factored by grouping. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at each one of those terms, and I'm going to see if I can take something out. This term has an x plus 7. This term has an x plus 7. So I'm factoring a binomial out of x plus 7. All right, in this first term, if I take the x plus 7 out, I'm left with the x squared. The minus sign would come straight down. And in this term, if I take out that x plus 7, I'm left with a 4. Okay, so factor by grouping is what I was doing there, uh, but using that factoring out that binomial to, to really have a good comprehension of that uh, factor by grouping. All right, now, 
you've got to make sure you factor completely. So again, I've got two terms here, but it's a plus sign. I cannot do anything with that. This is two terms and a minus sign. So again, I'm going to check for that difference of two squares. And this, this part does turn out to be the difference of two squares again. Okay, so I've got to factor it um, a little bit more here. So this x plus 7 is going to stay. All right, difference of two squares, square root of x squared is x, square root of 4 is 2. So then I'm going to have an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. Looking there then, I can see that I have nothing else to factor. All right, so this is just a couple of examples of, um, you know, going through and, and factoring more than one time. All right, by the time you are at the end of a factoring chapter, then they're going to expect you to be able to factor multiple times to get all the way down to a completely factored expression. Uh, definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Thanks.